Perfect. Now that we have this database model, we can start using it. So if we go back to our route, so under route, and if we click on the main route, first of all, we have our home route in here. So when we visit the home page, we are rendering the index. And when we visit the about route, we are rendering the about page inside views. So I'm going to make a little bit of space here and I'm going to put a comment for the home route here. I'm going to put this is a, a get method and this is the home route just so we know what it is. OK, so the plan is that I want to insert some data into the database so we can display on the home page and then we can create the detailed page. So when you click on the blog post, we can view it. In order to do this, first of all, we need to include our model inside here. And to do this, we can do const post and then equals require. And then we require the model that we just created, which is under models and then post. That's it. And now we can use this model to insert and retrieve data. So what I'm going to do is create a function that is only going to be used once to insert some dummy data. And you can copy this dummy data from the GitHub repository. Let's call this function something like insert post data. So function insert post data. And I'm going to do post, which is this here, the post model. And then we can do insert many. And then inside here, we can insert, we can put the object that we want to insert. So each blog post will have, if you go back to the model super quickly, will have a title and a body. The created ad and the updated ad will be inserted automatically and each model has unique ID, which we don't have to add in here. So first of all, let's add a title. And then inside here, we can put the title name. Building a blog. And now I can do comma. And then inside here, we can do body. And then for the body, this is the body text. Cool. And just like that, you can copy and paste a few more blog posts. and then. If you want to insert them, all you need to do is start the function inside here and literally just refresh the browser and that will be inserted. Obviously, don't forget to remove this. So what I'm going to do, I've already prepared a few and I'm going to copy and paste them. We and paste them inside here, save this. And now we have the insert post function working. All right. If you go back to the project refresh, uh, you won't be able to see anything in here. But if you go to the database and then if we click on browse collection, you should be able to see that we're getting the database table here of block and we're getting a database table essentially of post, which is our model. And now if we look at post, you will see that we have some of the posts and each post has a unique ID, which we're going to use in order to be able to select them. And then we have the title, the body created that, updated that and so on. You can go back, remove this. And in fact, you might as well delete everything from here because we won't need this anymore. I'm going to move it to the bottom just so you can have it. Like so, and I'm going to comment the whole bit. Perfect. Okay, now that we have some data in our database, let's see how we can retrieve it and display it on the home page. So what we need to do is we need to use a post model here in order to grab the data. First of all, make sure that or function here is asynchronous and in order to do this you can put async in between like so and now we can use a try catch statement inside here and the try will be basically we can do const data is where we're going to store all the data from the database and then we're going to do await post which we grab from here from the model and then we put dot and then the simplest uh, query is just find like so and this is going to find all the posts so that's how simple it is and then what we need to do is move the render inside here so we want to render when we get the data we want to render it just like we're rendering this object here we can render the data as well so what i'm going to do is comma data perfect and if we get an error maybe you can do a narrow page so for example i can do console log and then inside here we can do error save this and now if we go back to the browser 
make sure that your page is working and we should be able to start displaying some of the data. So if we go back to the page and if we go back to the views and then index.ejs, which is our home page, if you scroll down here where we have the articles and we have the list. So we want to replace this with EJS so they're populated through the database. In order to do this, let's remove the second list because we won't need it. And let's focus on this list here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with EJS and this one is going to be for each. So I'm going to select each here. And then basically we want to wrap the list. So we repeat like so in the for each element. And instead of array, we need to replace this with data because we are passing this data from here. So we replace it with data and we can call this whatever we like. For example, we can call it post. And now inside here, we can start grabbing the data. For example, we can start with the title. Let's do EJS. And this is going to be EJS out and we can do post because we're using this keyword here and then the title like so. And now I can do exactly the same for the date. So I'm going to do post created at and save. Let's have a look whether this works. First of all, refresh. And as you can see straight away, we're getting all the blog posts that we have on our database and we're getting the date, but the database is a little bit too detailed for my liking. As you can see, we're getting the full uh, date from here. And I want to make this look a little bit better. So what we can do, there are a lot of options, but an easy one from here, we can do dot to date string and close it. So now if you go back, refresh, you'll see that this makes it a little bit more readable. And there are a lot of options that you can choose from. Now let's have a look at how we can actually link those. And I'm not sure if I like this effect anymore, the blurry effect. I mean, it looked cool in the design, but now it's a little bit weird. Let's go back and let's see how we can link them. So for the link, I'm going to be using the ID of each blog post. If you go to the database super quickly, you'll see that each blog post has a unique ID. And this is what I'm going to be using it in order to query each blog post. And also I'm going to be using it as the slug just because they're completely unique. In future, you can add another field of slug and do it, but you need to make sure that each slug is completely unique. So to grab the ID, this is underscore ID. So what we can do is under here, we can grab this and we can replace the link here. And this is going to be post dot underscore ID. So we can grab the ID. And also I want to make sure that when we click on this link, we go to a page called post with this ID. So now let me tidy things up like so. And all I want to do now is save this, go back, refresh. And now if you hover over, you should be able to see on the bottom left corner that we're getting unique ID for each blog post. Obviously the links are not going to work just yet because we haven't created that route. But before we do that, I wanted to make sure that we also have the pagination working. So in order to make the pagination working, this is going to be a little bit more difficult. So what I'm going to do for the people that don't want to do the pagination, I'm going to copy this and paste it inside here. So it's available in the GitHub repository if you want to mess around. And now we can make this a little bit more complex and add the pagination. So what I want to achieve is I want to display, for example, 10 blog posts in here. And when we click on view all the posts, I want to display the next 10, the next 10 or the next available blog post if that makes sense. So let's do that. So first of all, let's move everything into the try catch inside here. So like so. And now let's remove this query, the find query. And obviously this is going to break, but we'll leave this for now. Let's start by creating a let, and this is going to be per page. And this is going to be equals 10. This is going to be how many blog posts do we want to display per page. So in this case, 10. So let page equals then request dot query and then dot page or one. So what this does is when we click on the link, 
So page query is essentially grabbing the URL query. In this case, if we go to our website, we can do something like page equals two. And this is gonna display the second page. So we're grabbing this query here. And what I'm saying here is that if we don't have a page query, we wanna set the default page query to one and get the first 10 blog posts. That's what I'm doing. And now we can do the query, which is a little bit more uh, advanced than the previous one. So const data, again, I'm gonna be reusing the same name. And then we're gonna do await and then post.aggregate. And then inside here, we can even put a sort. So for example, in curly brackets, we can sort the results. So sort. And then if we sort the result by created at, which is all date, minus one, this should make the oldest be at the top. And now we can chain the rest of the stuff. So inside here, we can do dot skip. And we can skip per page, which is this here. So we skip 10 times the page. So page, which is as the default one, or when we click on the second page will be two. And then, so we're doing 10 times two minus per page, like so. And then we can set a limit, so dot limit. And then the limit is gonna be per page, which is gonna be 10 as the default here. And then we can do exec, which executes aggregated pipeline, which is this here. And we need to do a couple of more things in here. We need to do another query and we need to query how many blog posts do we have in order to do this we can do const count equals await and then post dot count like so and then we can do const next page equals pass int in order to convert the number into an integer page plus one and you will see how this works in a second as well when I create the button. And now we're going to do const has next page equals next page smaller or equals then math.ceil. And then we can do count divided by per page. Cool. And now what we need to do is pass some of those. So we're passing the locals. Let me put them on another line like so, so they're a bit more. E so they're easier to read. So we're passing the data. We need to pass the current current page. So current page. And then we can pass the next page. So next page. And then inside here, we can check has next page. We can check if he has a next page. And then we can do next page or no. So if he does have a next page, we can set the number or we can put it as no. And now, if we go back to the index.ejs where we have view all the posts, ejs, and we can put a new statement here. And the condition is basically we're going to check whether we have a next page. If not, we don't want to display the pagination. So we're going to do the next page if is equals equals no. We don't want to display, but if it's not, I'm going to grab the link and put it inside here. And then the link will be href slash question mark page so this is going to be a parameter and then inside here we can do ejs and this is going to be ejs out and we're going to do next page like so the class is going to be fine yep i think that's it actually so if we save this if we save this and if you go back to the page and if you refresh you will see that we are not getting the link anymore and this is because we don't have enough posts so if I was to go back and on the main.js, if we change this to, let's say six, and if we go back, refresh, you will see that we're getting all the posts. And now if I click on this, you will see that we're getting page two and we're getting the last few blog posts that we have. So that's pretty much the pagination done. I can go back. So I'm going to change this to 10 and save. 